Eccoci qua. Benvenuti, benvenuti a tutti. Abbiamo qualche minuto per dare la possibilità a chi aveva piacere di seguire questa diretta di arrivare. Io solitamente cerco di collegarmi qualche minuto prima con evitare problemi tecnici. Oggi abbiamo sicuramente un ospite d'onore e nella forma di Jared Brown, master di stile di Sipsmith, nonché autore eh, storico del mondo della miscelazione. Ciao Paolo! E faremo due chiacchiere con lui appunto per quello che concerne un po' di topic interessanti eh, per il, per, per, nel nostro mondo insomma eh, quindi faremo due chiacchiere appunto con lui diamo qualche minuto a coloro che avevano piacere di seguire questa, questa diretta di potersi collegare se avete delle domande per Mr. Brown non esitate come sempre a scriverle eh, nei commenti o la, nella modalità domande di, di Instagram e farò di tutto di più per cercare di chiedergli tutti i vostri quesiti e curiosità. Eccolo Mr. Brown. Good evening sir, welcome. Good evening, sir. How are you? Oh, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Nice to see that both of us have good weather today. Yes. Oh, it's been magnificent. Yes, absolutely. Uh, well, it certainly puts a smile on our faces, you know, with all this, um, this, this uh, situation that we're going through at the moment. Oh, yes. Truly. Excellent. Excellent. Um, we're just going to give a few minutes uh, to anybody that would uh, like to participate to um, give them the opportunity to um, get connected. Um, yeah, my, my uh, memories of uh, the weather in the West Country are not so pleasant. Um, <laughs> it always used to rain when I was there. So, um, yeah, it's nice to see some sunshine. Absolutely. I have seen so much rain here, I can't begin to tell you, but uh, we've been self-isolating for, oh, since the end of March. And the weather has been just like this, just... Yeah, I can imagine. Fantastic. Beautiful, yeah. Beautiful green around you. It certainly gives, it gives you the possibility, you know, to relax a little, I suppose. Truly. Yeah. We've been very fortunate in that respect. Also, now is the time that we establish our garden for the year. Yeah. And uh, the garden has never been this good because I've yeah. been working from home. I, I've, been doing, I've been doing a bit of gardening myself. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's always nice to have the time to, you know, be able to dedicate. Um, it's a surprisingly good year for the licorice. The licorice okay. is growing very nicely, as is the... Oris Fiorentina, the Florentine irises. Mm -hmm. The coriander is just starting to come up. The angelica is huge already. Um, I have par parts of my garden are all gin botanicals. Yeah, I, I was just saying, you know, that you're talking a, a, about a lot of gin botanics there. Yeah. Excellent. Oh. Okay. Well, uh, Mr. Brown, thank you. Thank you so much for accepting my invitation to have a chat with you. Uh, we've, I've had the fortune of meeting with you uh, and Felix, uh, thanks to Sipsmith, around some, uh, some uh, trade shows like Bar Combin in Berlin, uh, specifically, I, I recall. Um, and like, like I've mentioned before, it's always nice to be speaking to somebody uh, of such uh, experience and expertise of our trade. Uh, you know, there's always something to learn. I, I, we run a, a hospitality school here in Italy, so it's always nice to transmit to some to to, to our students, is, is if that's how you can call them. You know, something something new, um, and and the passion that we have 
for, for our, our trade. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I'm going to introduce you. I hope the introduction uh, I've prepared is worthy. Um, and then obviously we'll do the Italian English thing so everybody can understand what, um, what, what we're saying. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, Jared Brown, um, author, historian, consultant, and all-round legend of uh, the mixology world. Uh, has won numerous awards alongside uh, Miss, Miss Miller, Anastasia Miller, uh, 2016 Imbibe Personality of the Year Industry Legends, 2011 IWSC Communicators of the Year, 2010 Class Mag Best Drinks Writing, 2010 and 2009 German World Cookbook Award. Uh, in 2009, he co-founds Sipsmith. Do correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, by the way, please. 2009, uh, uh, co-founder of Sipsmith and none other than Master Distiller. So he's the guy. If you want to be making gin, he's the guy you want to be speaking to. Um, uh, a lot of the books that he's written, um, some of my favorites are Shaken Not Stirred, uh, Celebration of Martini. Champagne cocktails. I'm a big rum fan as well. So Cuban cocktails and as a good Italian would, uh, the Mixellany Guide to Vermouth and other aperitif. Absolutely. Quindi ragazzi, eh, benvenuti a tutti voi. Eh, abbiamo la fortuna di fare due chiacchiere con il signor Jared Brown oggi. Eh, ha vinto numerosi uh, premi per uh, il suo lavoro insieme alla signora Anastasia Miller. Ehm, nel 2009 eh, diventa cofondatore di Sipsmith Gin. I always like to keep a bottle at home. Um, e, e Master Distiller, eh, una, una leggenda a tutti gli effetti del, del nostro settore. È sempre eh, un piacere poter scambiare due chiacchiere con persone di un'esperienza un così, così longeva, insomma. Ok. Um, as well, obviously, as all of this, you're the co-founder of the American Cocktail Museum in New Orleans with Mr. Dale DeGroff, who I had the fortune of chatting to just uh, 10 days ago. Um, and you have created the EUVS, which is an online library of uh, numerous, numerous artifacts and uh, various writings uh, that actually date back to 1750, if I'm correct. Yes. Wow. That's actually, a, a, a little bit earlier. I think the earliest one on there is 1729. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a free online library. We were very fortunate to collect books on drink when nobody was interested in them. Mm -hmm. Now, they're utterly unaffordable, but money should mm -hmm. never be a barrier to knowledge. So we've scanned and digitized about 156 books so far mm -hmm. and they're free no password no branding searchable across the platform free, free free resources especially you know like you say when a lot of a lot of material is very expensive is is absolutely amazing and i'm sure most important that, sorry oh no, i i firmly believe that in this life, it's not what we gain that is truly important, but what we give. Yes, absolutely. No secrets. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. absolutely. Uh, and I'm, I can imagine it, it was a, a very long and painstaking uh, work to, to be able to put everything together, right? It, it was. We, we had one friend working with us who prefers to remain anonymous. He, he is very high up in one of the international spirits brands, but uh, he couldn't have his name associated with it. Okay. Fantastic, fantastic, sir. But, Quindi, yeah, uh, ragazzi, um, stiamo appunto parlando del fatto che il signor Brown, insieme a, alla signora Miller, hanno creato la prima eh, biblioteca di materiale del mondo dell'amicelazione totalmente gratuita. Loro hanno iniziato a collezionare libri di amicelazione quando ancora eh, non erano così in voga. Eh, chissà che chi, chi ha la possibilità, ha avuto la possibilità di fare delle ricerche su alcuni 
testi eh, sicuramente sono molto molto costosi tramite le varie piattaforme su internet e, e, e il signor Brown insieme alla signora Miller hanno appunto eh, creato questa biblioteca totalmente gratuita vi daremo eh, l'indirizzo email per poter accedere senza password eh, senza, senza costi di iscrizione né niente dove alcuni dei dei testi addirittura sono pre 1750 quindi stiamo parlando comunque di tantissimi anni di eh, collezionismo di, di, di testi di, di miscelazione anche di, di importanza molto molto elevata fantastic excellent I, I must admit I've been uh, I've been poking around in there myself as well when I you know when I need to research or uh, I, I'm one of those that I'd like to uh, know what I'm talking about before I open my eyes Otherwise, I just, you know, <laughs> yeah, keep it shut. Um, okay, so uh, we're just, I was thinking of just having a chat generally about the the, um, the bartending world and what's going on at the moment and maybe some of the things you've seen yourself. Um, so um, we were saying that you are a master distiller at Sipsmith. How, how did this come about? I, I remember reading that uh, your first experiences of distilling were at the age of 10. Well, by 10, I had I'd kind of gotten bored with wine. Okay. Uh, three, three years of informal wine education, and I knew I would always enjoy wine, be passionate mm -hmm. about it, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't interesting beyond that. And mm -hmm. so I took cider and okay. used a very old technique called freeze distilling, Okay. to distill off the cider. I think the brew dogs did this with their nuclear penguin. Okay. Though I did it much earlier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, the trouble was, upstate New York, where I grew up, in the 1970s, you couldn't buy cider. Well, age 10, I couldn't buy anything. Yeah, so sure. I made a batch of cider, not my first. I'd been making cider for a couple of years by that point. Okay and uh, distilled it but to be honest it wasn't very good right. it certainly didn't appeal to a 10 year old palate no. so age 11 i started making liqueur uh, i remember the first thing i made was five liters of coffee liqueur okay. it was the 70s everybody was drinking sombreros and black yeah. russians and white yeah, russians i can imagine that was actually the That was the first time I got served in a bar. Uh, wow. I was 11. <laughs> well, uh, things have changed certainly uh, since then. Um, I, just, I looked at the wine list and I, I said to the bartender, it's a really good wine list. Who wrote it? And he said, oh, I did with some pride and confusion yeah. that he was talking to a kid. He said, very good. But by the way, on this one wine, you've got the varietal of grape wrong. <laughs> and he's like, wait, and I'm what? Sure, and I'm sure he's he's from an 11 oh, and I said, I'll tell you what, just give me a white Russian. <laughs> ah, fantastic. Ok, quindi eh, il, nostro, il nostro ospite di oggi ci sta raccontando che le, le sue primissime esperienze eh, nella distillazione, che ci credete o meno, sono iniziate all'età all di 10 anni. Uh, già appassionato del vino all'epoca ha iniziato a sperimentare con il sidro il sidro come, come sapete è un fermentato di mele um, molto molto comune in, in Gran Bretagna ma dove è, è cresciuto il signor Brown è, a, negli Stati Uniti non era così facilmente reperibile di conseguenza cosa ha fatto? ha iniziato a creare un sidro suo ha iniziato a creare un sidro suo una volta che aveva il prodotto finito ha pensato di distillarlo, distillarlo con un'antica un tecnica della distillazione che si chiama freeze distilling. Ehm, dopodiché alla, alla, ha sviluppato altre conoscenze e all'età di 11 anni ha iniziato a fare il, primi, il suo primissimo liquore, che è un liquore al caffè. All'epoca, neg negli anni 70, i eh, cocktails come appunto il Black Russian eh, andavano molto molto di moda e appunto all'età di 11 anni, eh, avendo comunque già una, una discreta esperienza al, ad una relativamente tenera età, entra in un locale per la primissima volta e fece i complimenti al barman che eh, scrisse la, la, la lista dei vini, eh, però gli fece, gli fece notare appunto un errore su una tipologia di, di, 
di Uve e del, di, di uno dei vini che aveva scritto. Quindi potete immaginare un undicenne che si presenta al Banco Bar e, e vi dice eh, hai sbagliato qualcosa sulla lista dei vini. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. I, I, I would love to have seen, uh, you know, this, the, the, the bartender's face, you know, you turning up and saying, look, dude, you've, you've gotten something wrong here. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So, um, I, 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 my, on to, uh, to, to moving on from this, I, I remember watching a fantastic, fantastic video with you, uh, Miss Miller, uh, in Burrell with how to lose a cocktail competition. Your faces were an absolute picture. Um, you know, we, we obviously live in a, 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 an era where cocktail competitions are uh, very current. You know, there are a lot of brands uh, doing cocktail competitions, which is nice because obviously, you know, we get to learn uh, what, what bartenders are up to and new techniques and stuff. But, um, but seeing... Um, Okay, I mean, I know Zed, he's, he's an absolutely amazing bartender. So to be seeing him um, muddling peppers with a, a Coke bottle, uh, and your face is what you say, great, great acting, guys, really, uh, was, was hysterical. Um, what, what sort of uh, advice could you give to bartenders that are, are looking or hoping to, to enter a cocktail competition? It, it's so funny that you brought up the how to lose a cocktail competition because I was judging a cocktail competition very recently. Okay. And one of the people who entered, I had to refer him to YouTube to watch Ian Burrell, how to lose a cocktail competition, because he made a drink that looked like a very good drink, but... It was a Sipsmith competition, and he didn't use any Sipsmith. Ouch. Yeah, I must have forgotten. Yeah. Um, and it, it wasn't like the one that uh, Ian Burrell may have even done, where he was in a, a rum cocktail competition, okay. and he didn't really like the rum that they made. Okay. So he said, okay, and I'm using 10 mils of your rum, but I'm also using 40 mils of this rum because I want the drink to taste good. <laughs> well, he, he, he's definitely a character, Burrell. Um, oh, he is. But yeah, uh, so um, what sort of, sort of uh, uh, apart from obviously reading the rules, um, what sort of advice would you give to any bartender that are hoping to enter a competition? Like I said, there, there are many at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, COVID aside, um, is there any um, advice that you, you'd like to share with us? Absolutely. The first piece of advice I've got is, unless it's a black box competition and you don't get to prepare, yeah. really prepare. And when you think you've got the winning drink, sit down and drink three of them. Okay. Have three of that drink. Uh, because... If you're just straw tasting, yes. you are never going to find the true character of the drink. Okay. Uh, the straw tasting is the same as doing this. Yeah. Okay. Because it isolates your mouth away from your nose. Yes. So absolutely. unless you're putting straws in your nose, yeah. which if you're putting straws in your nose, we have another problem. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But... Uh, yeah, so sit down, have three of that drink, because this is what makes all of the classics the classics, because the satiation point yes. in a gin tonic is not yes. here. It's no. not here. It's, it's here. Yeah. When you finish this drink, it seems like a good idea yeah. to have just one more. Yeah. If I put seven kefir lime leaves in here yeah. and I yeah. muddle them in, that yeah. first sip would be amazing. Yeah. But after that, yeah. I really want to switch to a beer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Fantastic. Ok, eh, quindi ragazzi, ho menzionato un, un video fantastico che si può trovare su YouTube, dove appunto i protagonisti sono il signor Brown e la sua compagna, Anastasia Miller, 
e uh, un signore che si chiama Ian Burrell che è il Global Ambassador di Room e la competition era ironica e satirica uh, di, su, sul come perdere una, una cocktail competition sicuramente in questi periodi ce ne, ce ne sono veramente tante gestite da varie tipologie di brand e appunto chiedevo al signor Brown quali erano eh, alcuni consigli che voleva condividere con noi per quanto riguarda l'affrontare una cocktail competition. Come diceva il signor, il signor Brown, appunto, è leggere, leggere, leggere bene il regolamento. E, mh, ha fatto, uh, è stato il uh, giudice ad una competition uh, di Shipsmith, appunto, uh, dove un concorrente si è dimenticato di utilizzare Shipsmith. Quindi anche le cose più basilari, mi raccomando, state attenti. Un'altra cosa uh, a cui ci tiene assolutamente precisare è il fatto di bere il drink una volta che siete contenti con la vostra ricetta bere il drink in questione ma non berlo con la cannuccia perché la cannuccia giustamente isola i profumi che si possono incontrare in un drink ma berlo, berlo direttamente dal bicchiere possibilmente, possibilmente berne anche più di uno per il semplice motivo che un buon drink diventa classico quando se ne beve più di uno eh, non, non, che non nausea che non stomaca subito quindi, eh, signor Brown, <coughs> perdon, ci sta succedendo appunto di, di berne addirittura tre, ovviamente dalle situazioni, immagino, ehm, per, per vedere appunto la, 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 la possibilità di, di, di volerne bere ancora e che non diventa appunto stomachevole o comunque che ci nausea subito. Quello sicuramente è, è una cosa molto, molto importante. Sì, yes, assolutamente. Um, uh, i think I think what we see these days is uh you know the the constant search of perfection you know and sometimes we we forget the the, the basics um I, I I follow a lot of cocktail competitions I've I've entered a couple myself so um yeah definitely definitely so you just said a very important word as well the basics and I firmly believe the words of Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, author yeah. of The Little Prince, yeah. who wrote, perfection is achieved not when there's nothing more to add, but when there is nothing left to take yeah. away. Yes. Absolutely. And if you want to find the perfect drink, it's not seven ingredients, it's not nine ingredients. Mm -hmm. It's three or four or maybe five, but it can be that simple. Well, if we see a lot of the classic drinks that we still drink today, you know, have been around 50, 60, 70 years, most of them are very, very, very simple drinks, you know. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think sometimes we, we like to complicate our lives a little too much uh, in, in, in order to, you know, come up with something new, and come up with something different. People say, but that can't still be done. And yet, look at new classics like yeah. Jorg Meyer's Gin Basil Smash. Yes. For ingredients. The penicillin. Fan. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So there, I could name so many yeah. new drinks that will be around in 100 yeah. years, and they will because they're just that few ingredients. Sasha Petrosky's Gold Rush with yes. bourbon, lemon and honey. Sì, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. Quindi stiamo, stiamo continuando appunto il discorso della, delle cocktail competition uh, dove il signor Brown ci dice che la, la perfezione non è necessariamente quando uh, non, non si riesce ad andare oltre, ma quando non c'è nulla da, da togliere. Uh, spesso e volentieri alcuni dei classici cocktail che conosciamo penso tutti eh, sono comunque cocktail con veramente pochi ingredienti eh, senza menzionarne ne, ne conosciamo veramente tanti e, e sicuramente guardando anche i nuovi classici come appunto il penicillin o il gin basil smash del signor Meyer ehm, a differenza di drink creati da Sasha Kotraske con anima ehm, sono, sono drink veramente veramente semplici quindi a volte la, la, la costante ricerca della perfezione ci, ci, ci toglie un pochino uh, quello che, che vorremmo, vorremmo ottenere in qualche maniera. Absolutely agree with you, sir. Absolutely agree with you. So, 
Um, what, what, in your opinion, obviously knowledge in our trade is very, very important. You know, what's actually inside a bottle that we're, you know, we're, we're using, we're grabbing, we're trying to combine flavors, et cetera, et cetera. What is, what is your opinion on, on formation, you know, on taking uh, courses and doing research and, um, you know, how, obviously it's important, but I mean, there, there are people that give it different levels of importance. The singer Eartha Kitt put it beautifully when she said, my tombstone will be my diploma. Okay. I will always be a student. Okay. Me, I'm still in school right now. I'm taking a master's degree in creative nonfiction writing, mm -hmm. but I'm also still studying drink history like a student. Yes. Uh, fortunately, Anastasia is now taking a doctorate in drink history. She just finished her second master's at Oxford yeah, in the subject. And so I've been um, learning drink history through her. Yeah, absolutely. So, yes, always study. There are so many courses. There's so much information. And this is the age in which we can talk from yes. the West Country to Italy yes. and be heard All in the away. east of England, the southeast of England and in America and in Asia all at the same time. So mm -hmm. there is no reason not to learn more. Absolutely, absolutely. Ho chiesto, eh, signori, ho chiesto appunto al signor Brown qual era a suo avviso l'importanza della formazione e nel nostro lavoro sicuramente la conoscenza dei, dei prodotti che andiamo a maneggiare tutti i giorni è molto molto importante e, 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 e ci, ci sta dicendo appunto che lui eh, nonostante la sua teneretà ci, ci, ci dice che eh, si reputa ancora uno studente lui sta ancora uh, studiando la storia dei cocktail insieme appunto alla signora Miller e di non, di non smettere mai di studiare, di non smettere mai di avere la fame di, di, di voler spingersi oltre per quanto riguarda appunto un, un punto di vista conoscitivo. Sicuramente in un'epoca dove abbiamo la possibilità di fare appuntamenti come questi, il signor Brown è, è nell'ovest dell'Inghilterra e possiamo essere ascolti, io che sono in, in, in Romagna, e possiamo essere ascoltati in tutto il mondo, eh, sicuramente la tecnologia è a nostro favore. Uh, this is certainly probably one of the best times uh, that, uh, I mean, I've been bartending almost 20 years now, but this is probably one of the best times to be doing this, right? Definitely. There, this is a great time in the history of bartending to be a bartender. Yeah. The professionalism is there more than ever. The respect for the profession is there more than ever. Finally, yeah. For, for a while, people only respected chefs. Yes. But bartenders are chefs as well. The yes. difference, the chef modifies the ingredients with fire, the bartender with ice. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Words of wisdom right there. Yes. Eh, il signor Brown ci sta dicendo che eh, sicuramente questo è un periodo veramente fantastico per eh, scegliere la nostra professione, per chi magari c'è qualcuno che eh, ci, sta, ci sta pensando, sta valutando di fare questo, questo step, eh, sicuramente la possibilità di eh, lavorare con tutto l'assortimento di prodotti che abbiamo alloggi eh, e comunque il, il fatto che il, il bartender oggi come oggi viene visto come una figura professionale a tutti gli effetti noi siamo chef del mondo del bar l'unica differenza è che lo chef modifica gli ingredienti con eh, il, il fuoco e eh, il bartender li, li modifica con il ghiaccio cosa molto 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 vera absolutely true absolutely true yes I, I mean um, she, surely uh, with with the amount of um, variety of products that there are available these days, uh, from spirits to liqueurs to uh, fruits, veg that, you know, get shipped out from the other side of the world. Whereas, you know, 
uh, a, few, a couple of decades ago, it certainly wasn't that easy to, you know, be able to get your hands on uh, a Buddha's hand as opposed to, you know, a, you know, something very particular that we may be able to see in drinks today. That's so true. Seasonality and regionality have all but disappeared. Yes. And yet, one of the biggest trends that we're seeing today in this world where you can have the same rum and coke in every bar on the planet is local, seasonal, yes. artisanal, craft. It, yes. It's People are looking for products yes. that aren't mass produced, yes. but are made, made by people with passion. Yes. Because passion is something a machine cannot produce. No, absolutely. And, I, think, I think it's our fuel, right? Yes. It has to be. Yeah. Il signor Brown ci sta spiegando che sicuramente, come, come gli ho detto, sicuramente questo è un periodo molto molto bello per fare il nostro lavoro perché eh, vi posso garantire che una ventina d'anni fa non c'era l'assortimento di prodotti che ci sono oggi, che possono essere distillati o liquori, abbiamo fatto tantissime scoperte, tantissimi passi avanti, forse anche da gigante nel mondo della miscelazione dove la stagionalità del prodotto non esiste più perché comunque si riesce a trovare... Eh, uh, praticamente qualsiasi prodotto praticamente quasi in qualsiasi parte del mondo quindi sicuramente la stagionalità eh, non, non è più un fattore che va ad implicare eh, quelle che sono le scelte, le scelte lavorative o comunque le scelte di ingredientistica all'interno dei nostri cocktail following on from this uh, Mr. Brown um, I, I personally have a very um, straightforward opinion on when it comes to a gin and tonic Okay, mm -hmm. I like my gin and tonics as they come. So I would grab my bottle of Sip Smith, heavy dose of Sip Smith, lots of ice, and a tonic of my choice. I'm a I'm a dry gin and tonic fan myself, um, but I see a lot of bartenders uh, often garnishing their gin and tonics with all sorts of stuff. What is what is your opinion on this? Well, the one that I've just finished actually had no garnish. Okay. But okay. Um, to me, I like, personally, I like just a little zest, a twist. Okay. Okay. I think that's enough. Mm -hmm. And unlike a martini, I will put that twist into the gin tonic. Yeah. A martini, I'll squeeze it over and yeah. discard it exactly. rather than exactly. putting it in. Yeah. But uh, yeah, to me, personally, that's enough. But the yeah. gin tonic... I like uh, 50 mils of gin to 100 mils of tonic. So just two parts Perfect. tonic to one part gin, yep. to me, is the perfect balance. If you get yep. more tonic in there, you lose the gin. Yes, absolutely. Now, um, well, basically, I mean, I obviously, you know, the customer um, has a right to have, uh, you know, a, a personalized gin and tonic should they wish. But um, mm -hmm. I've, I've often said to, you know, uh, a lot of the people that come, come to us for bartending courses, you know, they often say to me, Anto, what should we put in a gin and tonic? And I, I've always said to them, who am I? Obviously, we're talking about Sipsmith today. Who am I to uh, change a product that fundamentally is perfect, you know, to be adding cardamom, um, Angelica, kefir lime, whatever, whatever your mind comes across or whatever you have on, on, on your bar top, you know, to be able to change, to change a product that fundamentally, you know, is, is perfect. I, I agree. And there, there are times and places for that. Mm -hmm. And I will never argue that a, a bartender should not put their personal signature okay. onto it. But... The goal is ultimately to make not the most different drink, not the weirdest drink, but to make yeah. the best drink. Yeah. And to me, I like my gin tonic this way. Uh, yeah. Heston Blumenthal, who has won best restaurant in the world with the fat duck in England, when he was opening a restaurant in London, he brought his chefs and kitchen teams from his other restaurants and 
to relax. They did a blind tasting of garnish, tonic, and gin okay. to try to find the world's best GMT. This was about uh, six years ago, I think. Okay. They selected lemon uh -huh. over all the other possible garnishes of grapefruit and cucumber and lime and orange and strawberries and all that stuff. They selected fever tree, which was a fairly new tonic at the time. Yes. And they unanimously selected a gin that at the time was really unheard of. They, they picked Sipsmith. So I can't argue with that one. No, no of course. Absolutely, absolutely. E quindi stiamo, stiamo parlando appunto della, del, del, della possibilità di servire un gin and tonic, o, o meglio, ho chiesto al signor Brown qual era la sua opinione su come dovremmo servire il gin and tonic. Uh, io personalmente sono sempre stato dell'opinione che sicuramente la, la richiesta del cliente è sempre la più importante, um, però a mio avviso uh, le, svariati gin and tonic dovrebbero essere eventualmente arricchiti con una scorza e poco più. Si vedono uh, in, giro, in giro per tanti locali che spesso e volentieri cerchiamo di, di andare oltre. Fondamentalmente parliamo di un prodotto che è già perfetto in sé per sé. Io sicuramente non mi metterei mai a paragone del signor Brown a, a, a voler modificare un gin and tonic eh, di, di, questo, di questo genere, di questo calibro. Il signor Brown ha condiviso con noi una, una, una storia molto simpatica, una storia molto piacevole del fatto che eh, il, il Fat Duck, che è un ristorante che ha vinto il miglior ristorante al mondo qualche anno fa in Inghilterra, ha uh, chiamato il, il direttore, ha chiamato tutti i suoi collaboratori, the dog, um, tutti i suoi collaboratori all'interno di un ristorante hanno fatto un blind tasting di gin and tonic per definire a loro uh, avviso qual era il gin and tonic più buono da voler servire nel loro ristorante. E con un blind tasting sono tutti arrivati alla decisione che la, la miglior tonica era la Fever Tree, che all'epoca era una tonica relativamente eh, nuova o meno conosciuta di oggi. Erano tutti d'accordo sul fatto che eh, bastava gli oli essenziali alla scorza di un limone ed erano tutti d'accordo che anche questo all'epoca era un po' meno conosciuto e il miglior gin era appunto Sipsmith. Quindi sicuramente sono, sono, scelte, sono scelte aziendali, sono scelte personali, eh, però c'è Volete un consiglio o una semplicissima osservazione? Provate a berli lisci, gin and tonic, e poi magari modificandoli con alcune botaniche o frutta che possa essere. Eh, sicuramente sono mode e tendenze del momento eh, e, questo, e questo fondamentalmente qua. What a story! Excellent! Very interesting! Absolutely! Um, so, new projects. Uh, Ms. Miller shared with me the, the, the fact that you're working on a fantastic new book that I will sure, uh, be sure to be reading because it's a topic I'm very interested in, which is gin. Um, and, you know, sharing some, some secrets that we... She, she said to me that apparently we'd all gotten it wrong uh, about some things, which obviously mm -hmm. uh, we, we're all very curious to hear. Um, is there any other projects that you're working uh, on that you'd like to share with us? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> I'm sure that you, that you can share with us. You know, I, I realize a lot of things are private and confidential until a given date. Oh, there are a lot of projects that um, I just don't know if they'll be worth talking about until they've happened okay. and, and to see if they come along. One that I'm very fascinated by that we've just come out with from Sipsmith as a, a limited release is a chili and lime gin. Wow. Now, in the, in the distillery, we, we have this team of remarkably talented and creative young distillers. Okay. And they like forcing plants to grow in a certain shape. Okay. They are frustrated by having to be masters of replication of the standardized formula. Yeah. Uh, they, they're very happy to do it, but it is the same every day. And so yeah. they also have a creative outlet of 
the small vacuum still in the lab and then a small um, 60 liter copper pot still to play around with. Yeah. And uh, so we're always encouraging them to experiment and to test the wildest ideas. Yes, and yeah. sometimes, sometimes they just work. So yeah. a, a classic London dry structure, but balanced with chili and lime. And okay. it's really good. Okay. Excellent. I look forward to that one. Absolutely. <laughs> Excellent. Um, quindi ho, ho chiesto al signor Brown se c'era oltre al libro um, che, che sta per uscire, che ha, ha, sta, sta, sta completando con la signora Miller, eh, dove ci svelerà dei segreti del gin, eh, tante cose che, di cui noi eravamo convinti che apparentemente eh, non, non, non sono poi così, uh, così straightforward, si dice in inglese, non sono così per dire. Um, ci, sta, ci sta appunto raccontando del fatto che um, alla, alla distilleria di Sipsmith um, hanno una squadra di giovani eh, distillatori, master, distillatori, perché il master distiller giustamente è lui, um, che spesso e volentieri sperimentano con eh, vari, vari flavors, vari profili di, um, di, 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 di prodotti e di, di materia prima per creare Um, nuovi, nuovi, nuovi gin, nuovi, nuovi distillati, tra cui uno che uscirà appunto in There it is, fantastic. What? I love the label. It's, 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 it sort of uh, detaches a little bit, you know, very colorful. Of, um, excellent, excellent. Yeah. Fantastic stuff. Um, con, uh, con appunto con del peperoncino del lime, eh, ha sempre la struttura di un London Dry. Uh, però appunto le, le, ci saranno dei, dei, dei profili uh, di, di flavors appunto di peperoncino e lime. When will uh, this one be available? Um, this one is available in just a few shops in England at the okay. moment. Okay. Uh, we, we don't really plan these things. Uh, no. If you look at the whole history of Sip Smith, uh, We started out with our London Dry, then we were playing around in the distillery and we came up with the very Junipery Overproof. Yeah. Um, the Slow Gin, we had to make one because we felt that uh, Slow Gin wasn't being made properly. Okay, okay. Uh, the traditional recipes for Slow Gin in England and Slow Gin is to England what Limoncello is to Italy. Yes. Everyone makes it. Everyone's very proud of it. Um, the only difference when I was first studying slow gin over here is well, limoncello is good. The slow gin just wasn't hitting the mark. It was mostly too sweet and left on the fruit too long. So we came up with a slow gin and we made a London cup. Yeah. Our... Um, And that one just happened because Fairfax said, oh, we should have a, a Pim's cup. And I said, I'll make them. And yeah. he pulled out a bottle of Pim's. And I said, no, no, I'll make it the way Mr. Pim used to. He didn't yeah. have bottled stuff. No, and he put that together. And suddenly he needed five liters for the weekend. And then Sam needed 10 liters for the next weekend. And then 50 liters for a company event. Then they sat me down and said, Can you make a couple thousand liters? We want to put it into production. <laughs> Now, I was using vermouth in this. So I pulled out my phone and I called Torino and I said to a friend in Torino, hey, can I get a thousand liters? Oh, of vermouth. course. Yeah. And I said, can I get that in bulk? And he said, no. So the first batch, we had to open a thousand <laughs> bottles. Wow. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. Um, il signor Brown ci sta, ci sta raccontando appunto che questi nuovi esperimenti come il, il nuovo prodotto che sarà disponibile in alcuni negozi in Inghilterra eh, non, non sono prodotti pianificati, non sono, non sono release pianificate, ma sono, eh, spesso volentieri, sono degli esperimenti. A, a, a Londra, a Sipsons, appunto, hanno una... Hanno una 
eh, un, un laboratorio dove appunto effettuano questi, questi esperimenti. Eh, cosa simile è successo appunto con lo slow gin, eh, sempre di Smith, Sip Smith dove eh, inizialmente hanno, hanno, hanno assaggiato tanti degli slow gin che c'erano in giro all'epoca dove spesso e volentieri hanno trovato che erano troppo dolci o, o sapevano troppo di prugna e di conseguenza hanno pensato di eh, provare, fare dei test a farne alcuni, alcune centinaia di litri, po pochi eh, il signor Brown utilizzava il vermouth all'interno di, di, di questo slow gin e piano piano eh, prese, comunque, eh, prese piede il consumo di slow gin ad un evento a differenza di Altri, altri appuntamenti e, e arrivò a doverne fare un paio di migliaia di litri alla volta, quindi contattò una, un brand di Torino per um, l'acquisto la, la, di mille litri di, di vermouth eh, dove però non gli fu recapitato in, in bulk, come diciamo noi in gergo quindi non era una tanica da mille litri ma erano mille bottiglie di vermouth quindi hanno dovuto aprire bottiglia per bottiglia e versarle all'interno della cisterna per poter uh, fare, fare appunto lo slow chain. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. Um, I'm going to ask our viewers if they have any questions. Uh, please write them in our little comments box. I know that Instagram has a comment section, uh, a question section. Um, hopefully, Mr. Brown, we'll be able to travel again sometime soon and I'll be able to host uh, you and Anastasia at the school. Oh, we would love that. Absolutely. And, um, I'm, I'm fortunate to live in an area of Italy where the food is great, the wine is great, and we have a good bunch of bartenders that will be able to entertain you with some good cocktails. I have not been to a part of Italy where the food was not great. <laughs> But <laughs> I love the, the passion for food and for great drink in Italy, all across Italy, this understanding of having what's in season Yeah. until you absolutely can't have it anymore. You're so sick of it. By that time, the season has ended. Yeah. And 11 months later, you're dying for another artichoke. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. We're, we're having artichokes again tonight. I think this is the fourth or fifth night in a row because we've got <laughs> a lot of artichokes in the garden. Yeah. Breakfast every day, asparagus from a neighbor who I... I trade well recently i traded some cocktail books but uh, don't Excellent. don't tell because her husband no, no, getting them for no, her birthday no, no, no. Eh, no ho chiesto al signor brown se, se sarebbe uh, disponibile per venire presso la nostra scuola e fare una, una master class uh, perché no con la, con la signora miller quando avremo di nuovo la possibilità di viaggiare e, e ha detto sì assolutamente non vedo l'ora um, non, non c'è parte dell'Italia dove, dove qui in Romagna sicuramente si mangia molto molto bene, si beve molto molto bene e ci sono dei, dei bravissimi, preparatissimi bartender che saprebbero intrattenere la, la, la power couple of uh, mixology, as I like to call you, um, e, e, e sicuramente... Um, ci, ci sta facendo notare la stagionalità di prodotti e la passione che abbiamo nella cucina appunto qui in Italia. Quindi ehm, saremo, saremo veramente onorati di poterli ospitare la scuola a Cesena. Eh, ne approfitto per eh, ricordarvi chi ha piacere di mettere i, mi piace e i follow sulle nostre pagine. Mr. Brown, apparently we don't have any questions, so I would love to thank you for your time. It has been an absolute, absolute pleasure. And um, if I don't, uh, if, if we don't see you in Italy, hopefully we'll see you very soon at some trade shows with a gin and tonic, with a citron and tonic, right? Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Or a gin ricky is also very good at this time of year. Yeah. The gin ricky, so forgotten, but simply that same structure, a highball glass filled with ice, gin, and then soda water, sparkling yeah. water, squeeze a lime wedge or two into the glass. Yeah. Of course, you don't stir a gin tonic. You just put mm. the spoon down and lift yeah. a couple of times. That mixes everything vertically without mm. losing the bubbles. And the gin ricky is gorgeous right now. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think a lot of these drinks are sort of, uh, like, like we were saying earlier, you know, we're, we're constantly thinking of new flavors and things like this, but 
uh, I think if we took a step back and, and saw, uh, you know, some of the cultures that were in, uh, were in fashion, as though to say, just, just not so long ago, I think we'd probably discover some very, very uh, good cocktails. Oh, there's so much to discover in history. There's so much to discover that's going on right now. Yeah. And it's important to discover this because we build the future on the present and the past. And so if you, if you really want to take drink to the next step, Look at past, look at present for inspiration, because I guarantee you, they also made the mistakes that you don't need to make. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And th this is one of the keys to, to creating the future. Yeah. Is, is, I mean, these shoulders here are for the next generation to stand on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Mr. Brian, like I said, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Please send my regards to Anastasia. It's been fantastic to speak to you both. And like I said, hopefully uh, we'll be able to meet up soon in person and have a drink. Oh, definitely. Oh, forgive me, but there was one thing you said right at the start that's yeah. been sitting in my head this whole time. Yeah. And you mentioned that you were just talking to Dale DeGroff. Yes. And Dale oh, was... I was lucky enough to speak to him twice. One, one of the people who really inspired my passion further in cocktails, when in 1990, I went to work at the Rainbow Room where he was bartender. Okay. And Excellent. I was working at the Rainbow Room as a waiter and I walked by the service bar one afternoon and uh, there he was. And the first words he ever said to me was, hey you, you wanna see how to flame a twist? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. 15 minutes later there was an orange that had lost all its twists a pile of burnt wooden matches and a flame of passion that was ignited so for that I always love that man yeah I, I, I do too obviously I don't, I don't have the fortune of knowing him as much as you do but for the little that I know him, he's, he's a really fantastic, fantastic person. Il signor Brown ha voluto lasciarci con un ultimo aneddoto. Um, abbiamo menzionato Del De Groff, che è stato nostro ospite. Potete tra l'altro vedere le, le, le dirette sul Instagram TV, e dove ha avuto la fortuna di lavorare al Rainbow Room, uh, locale fantastico di New York, uh, dove entrambi sono diventati famosi. E il, Mr. Brown appunto, ha lavorato lì come cameriere. E la primissima cosa che eh, il signor De Groff gli ha detto è eh, «Ehi tu, vuoi vedere come fare un flambè di, di, di scorza d'arancia?» e, e in 15 minuti c'era una pila di scorze d'arancia con due pacchetti di, di fiammiferi lì utilizzati e, e quella è stata in qualche maniera la passione che il signor De Groff ha trasmesso al signor Brown eh, che, 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 che si porta dietro tutt'oggi. What a, what a story, what a story. You know, obviously to involve uh, such big, um, you know, personalities of our trade. Fantastic, fantastic. Mr. Brown, thanks again for your time. I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening and uh, let's keep in touch for, for future uh, possibilities, why not, if you'd like to. Definitely would love to. And thanks to all who showed up, especially thanks for just sharing the passion for this wonderful subject. Excellent. Excellent. And the next time we all get to raise a glass together, I look forward to it. Cheers to all. Thank you. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.